Hello ladies and gentlemen, this is Professor Sides and this course is Principles of Microeconomics, Chapter 7, Consumers, Producers, and the Efficiency of Markets. When we look at um, market efficiency, remember in our previous lectures we talked about the consumer side and we talked through willingness to pay um, in order to get to a place of consumer surplus. Now we're going to switch our focus and move towards the supply side or the producer side. And we're going to talk through producer surplus. And then at some point we're going to pull them both together to talk about market efficiency, which is at the heart of welfare economics. When we talk about um, the supply side, the supply side is what the producer or seller is willing and able to sell and generally it is based on cost. What does it take? What, how much does it cost the seller to produce and, and or sell a good or service? And then based on that we can derive um, producer surplus and then we can move, um, extrapolate that out more towards uh, market efficiency. In this segment of the lecture, we're going to take an example of three producer sellers. Jack, his cost is $10. Janet, her cost is $20. And Chrissy's cost is $35. Now, we can make some inferences about what's at play relative to why Jack's costs are $10 as opposed to Chrissy's cost, which is $35. There could be something called economies of scale at work here. We're unsure um, because that would be the topic for a more advanced economics class. Um, but for right now, we just know that Jack, Jack's cost to produce and sell his goods and services is $10 as opposed to Janet's 20 and Chrissy's 35. Now, when we take their cost, basically what we do is we create a supply schedule. Remember the demand schedule is price, time, uh, price and quantity demanded supply schedule is price and quantity supplied. And so what we find here is that between zero and nine dollars, nobody is willing to supply any produce and or supply any goods or services. When the price rises to 10 to 19 dollars, only one person. When it is 20 to 34 dollars, only two individuals. And then when the price goes from 35 and up, all three are willing to produce and then sell their goods or services. Now, when we take this supply schedule and create a supply diagram, what we have is this. And basically, all we did was we, again, from chapter four, took the supply schedule and then uh, graphed it out on the diagram. There's the zero to nine. There's the 10 to 19, there's the 20 to 34, and there's the 35 and up. Now, when you have multiple, as we, in, as we include more and more producers, then this stair step will smooth out, causing our supply curve. And as you notice, especially between uh, 20 and $35, it is extremely steep which would cause the, um, which is another reason why we see the upward sloping, but it's steep in that area. And as you can see, here's Jack's cost at 10, here's Janet's cost at 20, here's Chrissy's cost at 30, and if we included even more producers' costs, again, that line would um, that line would smooth out, cause uh, creating our supply curve. Now, when we talk about producer surplus, remember that the, the definition of producer surplus is the price that they sell their good or service for minus cost. We in economics call that producer surplus. In other disciplines within the business, um, within business, we they would call that profit. Again, whether it's management, accounting, marketing, finance, when you take the price minus cost, that is 
profit in economics is producer surplus. This concludes this segment of the lecture. When now what we will do is move forward um, towards market efficiency. And in our next segment of lectures, we're going to put consumer surplus and producer surplus together and then um, starting it on the analysis. I look forward to speaking to you so shortly.